Hey everyone on YouTube, what's happening? It's Craig from Flying Wheels. Good morning to me, good afternoon to you guys, depending on when you guys are watching these videos. If you're already following my channel, thank you for the support. It is always appreciated. If you're not already following us, make sure to subscribe down below. It's a car page, it's about making money, it's about having fun, it's about driving cars. Today's kind of a neat one. So I have a friend uh, that called me. He's a developer in Boston and he bought a uh, property out in Boston and in the garage way in the back was a Mustang and a Caprice. He's not a car guy, he knows nothing about this stuff, but he did think of me because he needs to get those cars out of there. So he bought the property and it came with the two cars in the garage. Uh, it came with anything on the property. So uh, he ended up getting these two cars. He doesn't know anything about them. He knows they don't run, he knows they've been sitting forever. Uh, so he called me and he said he wants uh, 800 bucks for the pair. So right off the bat, he sent me some photos of it. He told me about the car uh, that he knew, I mean really, which was nothing. He just said he has a red Mustang and a white Caprice. They've both been sitting for a while and they don't run. He wants 800 bucks for the two of them. So right off the bat, that sounds amazing, unless these cars are ready for the junkyard. So I went on a limb, I gambled again, and I just said I'll take them. I actually ended up getting both for $600, uh, plus towing. So towing is more than the cars themselves because it's in the middle of the city, it's not easy to get to. It's the building, a small, thin driveway. You go behind the building in a 90 degree, and then there's the garage. So some poor tow truck driver had to go get those cars for me. I knew it wasn't going to be easy, which after speaking to him, it wasn't easy. So these two cars, I didn't have time to go down there, and he had two days to get them out of there. He needed them gone. So I just, I said, I'll take them. Um, and the tow truck driver, I set it up with the tow truck driver, it cost me 500 bucks for him to go down and get both cars. The first night he went down, he, I sent pictures, I sent videos, I wanted him to know what he was in for. The first night he went down there, like nine o'clock at night, and I guess the police came and sent him out of there. He was there for like 15 minutes and the police came in and said, they'll tow his tow truck if he doesn't leave. So he went down to Boston in the middle of the city in his tow truck on a Friday night, got sent home. He went back again on Saturday. He pulled both cars out, put them in the street. Again, the police came on him. And then uh, he took one home. And then yesterday he brought the second back for me. So I told him just drop them off where he could. He actually told me the wheels don't even move. The wheels don't even spin. So he dragged them onto the, plat onto the uh, flatbed and he barely got them off the flatbed. Right off the bat, that's gonna suck because I don't know where he parked them at my shop. I haven't seen these cars. I don't even know what year Mustang. It looked like a 67, 68 from the front. I couldn't see the taillights to really confirm the year. And the Caprice was like an 81 or something with low miles. So I don't even know where these cars are sitting in my parking lot right now. They, they could be in the middle of everything and immobile. So we're on our way to go find out what the heck I bought for $600. Uh, if they were worth it, if they were not, or if I'm just gonna call the scrap yard and, and get these cars out of here. So here's the conversation between texts, because really you can see how vague everything is. The guy has no idea what he has. I don't even really know what he has. I'm going off a couple really, really bad pictures of cars covered under snow. And then uh, here, here's the conversation. Check it out before we go over to my shop. We're just a few seconds away from my shop. I'm really nervous, but also excited. It's like Christmas morning to me. I don't know if these cars are going to make me fall in love or break my heart, but I'm few. Uh, I'm pulling up right now. I'm pulling up right now. I don't even know what to, ex oh, awesome. He put them in the dirt. Oh, that's so great. They're not in the way of anything. You can see behind me, I am completely stacked up with cars. I have no space for anything. So fortunately, the tow driver thought ahead and park them over here in the dirt, which is great, so they're out of the way. They're not moving around, they're not moving, so at least they're out of the way. Here's the first one, Mustang. Mm, 60, so oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. It is a, yeah, it's a 67 or a 68. Paint is destroyed. Bottoms of the doors are destroyed. Does the door even open? At least the door opens. Oh my God. This thing is disgusting. But if I divide the two, I pay 300 bucks for it. 
This is gross. Yeah, realistically, I probably shouldn't have bought these, but the floor is... Oh, the floor isn't even there. Ugh, oh, there's no floor. The seats are ripped. The door doesn't shut. The bottom of the fender has a wood bumper. I think it's a V8, though, which is part of the appeal to this car. That's why I bought... Oh, my goodness. What's under this? Oh, it's like brand new. Brand new with a carpet. Oh. This one I'm actually really pleased with. Who would have known the Caprice Classic would have been the winner out of the two? I was really pushing for that Mustang. And what the heck's up with the guy putting a Caprice in the garage for 30 years and not the Mustang? So here are my winners slash losers. So I'm really curious about this Caprice. You can see it's just covered in dirt, but I think it'll all clean up. I mean, there's some rust in places that I'll grind down and, and paint, but I think this car is gonna be really nice. So going over to the inspection sticker, this is what, it has a November 1987 inspection sticker, which means that's the last time it was on the road, legally at least. Here's the couple things that I found that I really liked going inside this car. So I found each seat had like a carpet on top of it. And when I pulled the carpet off, the seats were like brand new. The door, look at the vinyl on the door panels. The headliner is all amazing. The chrome on the light is in great shape. So... Look at this sear cassettes everywhere. Look at this sears bag. Let's see what's in here. Just a receipt from let's see. 112486. Look at the look at the dashboard. The dashboard's amazing. And a little bit of mold on the steering wheel and stuff, but that'll clean right off. Let's see what's in here. Oh my goodness, the original books are in here. Please be a window sticker. Oh my goodness, it came with the window sticker. Nineteen eighty-four Caprice Classic four door. Alright, what are your guesses? Here's the other half. What do you guys think it was brand new? Thirteen 13,862. That's a lot of money in 1984. 13,000 bucks. The original owner's manual is in here with it. It's in, it's, it looks like it's never been touched. This is a time capsule. Let's see what else is in here. So his cassettes. I found his paperwork with his death certificate. Look up here. Oh, up here. The glass is still in here. Let's see what these look like. Oh my goodness, if these don't scream, 1986 Boston, I don't know what does. Oh my goodness, I belong in a movie with these things. These are not even prescription, these are realistic, real sunglasses that somebody wore in 1986. I'm keeping them. I think I might wear these glasses for the rest of the video. Alright, so I did find the keys for it. Let's pop the trunk open and see what's in here. A dead body, rotted, dry rotted, gone maybe, just bones. Ugh. Oh, we got a spare tire cover, hammer, little gas can. Oh my goodness. Oh, I was hoping, the, is the camera in here? No, just more cassettes. Nothing amazing. Wait a minute, let's dig. Let's dig. Some spark plugs from Sears. Oh, from Kmart in 1984. Is there a receipt in there? More spark plugs. Some bowling shoes. Check out these Primo bowling shoes. Are they my size? Tens? Yep. Got myself some new bowling shoes. I am loving this car. Look at the trunk. Oh my goodness. Look at how clean that trunk is. Look at It's brand new factory paint. Look how clean that vin, vin tag is. Everything's amazing. I found some receipts. Spark plugs from 1986 from Kmart, wheel covers, a camera case,
new gas can. I got myself some bowling shoes, even in my size. What a score on this Caprice. All right, now onto this Mustang. This thing is rough, rough. Wooden bumper. Is it four inches thick? It's four inches wide. Four inches thick would pass inspection. The fenders, everybody keeps telling me it's a 67 because there's no side marker lights on the fenders. But I checked the VIN, it is a 68. I'm afraid to even look in the trunk because this thing is sitting on its ass. It is rotted in every corner. Inspection sticker, four of 96. So this thing was probably rotted in 96. It's been repainted obviously because they even painted the trim. Must have had Mako do it or something. Let's open the door. Doesn't open, no luck. Open the hood. There's a good old 289 V8. Now from what I'm told, this is a matching numbers V8. Couple Sunoco cans in there. It hasn't been running in decades, so I don't even want to try to get it to crank. We'll probably pour some Marvel in it and see if it turns later on. What a damn shame. Mirrors rotting off the door. Now this one doesn't have any keys, unfortunately. Seats are all ripped up. Some critters got to it. Oh, look at that Gatorade, new flavor. Got myself some jumper cables. Now that's a 68 steering wheel. Automatic floor shifter, doesn't have the factory AC, which is actually worth some money. This car is probably worth more to part than it is to sell as a whole. I have it listed already for 1500 bucks online. And people keep, people have interest in it. I don't know what the heck these things are worth ready for, ready for the junkyard. But I don't want to give it to the junkyard because there's parts in it that has value. Look at the gas cap, the tail lights, everything has value to it. What should I do with the Mustang? I have no clue. I don't want to junk it. It's, it's too rare to junk. Not that it's super rare, but it is a cool car. It was a cool car at one point, so I don't want to junk it. There are parts on here. The hood's worth money. The engine's worth money if it turns over. I don't know what it's worth. What do I do with that? 1500 bucks or more or less? What do you guys think? Now that Caprice I'm excited to work on. So I bought these two cars sight unseen. Had I seen the Mustang, I probably wouldn't have bought it. It's still kind of neat though. It's kind of a cool story that I did end up with it and the backstory that it sat in some guy's yard in Dorchester for 15, 20 years, 20 plus years actually. The Caprice, I think I won with it. I mean, this thing probably has zero value. Oh, there's missing a hubcap and I found the hubcap in the truck so there's probably zero value in the car but it's still a really cool car if I can get it running so I'll probably put some time into it and get it running I mean you saw how clean the inside of the trunk was hopefully the entire undercarriage and inside of the car was mint hopefully the thing turns over after a while of, after I put some work into it and get the thing going and I hope the body cleans up well I'm really excited about that one that one I have no idea what to do with it what would you guys do with it what do you recommend so far, I think the biggest score was these shades. Second hand would be this Caprice Classic. I don't know, what do you guys think I should do with them? That one I'm not gonna rebuild. I already have a 73 project that's been sitting in my garage for over a year. You guys tell me what you would do. Hit me up, make sure you're subscribing if you're not already subscribing. Thanks for the support always. See you later guys, adios.